Hey everybody, welcome to GMG Review. Today I'm taking a look at the Warhammer Age of Sigmar two-player starter set, Extremis. Um, now, this was kindly sent to me as a free sample by Games Workshop, uh, and contains two sort of like starter forces for the Orc War Clans and Stormcast Eternals, and is much more beginner focused than the previous Dominion box that we checked out, which was, if you watch my reviews and my commentary on it, it was much more of like just an army bundle with a, a hardcover rule book in it than an actual starter set. This is a functional starter set. All of my sort of like criticisms of the Dominion box not being a starter set are pretty much resolved in here. Um, you get two kind of little beginner armies, each with a battle line choice, each with a hero, and kind of an additional unit. Um, you get a core, like, soft cover A5 scale rulebook, uh, and you also get a little, like, um, Warcry sized battle mat for, like, a skirmish sized game. I uh, get some Legion's abilities, you get the cool data cards, and even some terrain. So let's show you the box, uh, and then I'm going to do an in-depth book review as the second half of this. This is just kind of an overview of the components, and then we'll do a sit down and flip through the books and show you those two. So let's take a look at what I got done. So here it is in all its glory, the Extremist Star Set, and also, sorry, the Orc War Clans Gut Rippers paint set, um, which I forgot to mention. Uh, so what do you get in this box? Well, here painted up, I've got most of the box done. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I jacked up my hand last night and was unable to finish these Hobgrots. Uh, I had a nice, because I have a copy of Dominion, I had a head start and I can show you guys this stuff painted, but the Hobgrots are just assembled and primed on my desk right now um, because I, yeah, I jacked up my hands. But you're gonna get 10 Hobgrots uh, Slitters, you're gonna get some Gut Rippers, which is the battle line choice for the, um, the Cruel Boys, and you get a, a Swamp Kala Shaman and his Pot Grot, which are the sort of like magic users. On the Stormcast side, you get a unit of Vindictors, which is your battle line choice, a Lord and Puritan, which is a fantastic leader choice for the Stormcast with his free ability to give a command every turn, and a Bodyguard for him, which is the Praetors. Now, stuff that you're also gonna get is some terrain. And again, I the plan was just to like get it put together and some base cuts on it, but Unfortunately, I'm going to show you a picture of it right now because my hand is, luckily it's the camera holding hand, which finger is maybe broken, um, but it's also my paintbrush holding hand, unfortunately, so I can still point and do things, but the other hand is a bit jacked up. You get this cool tower, um, you get uh, two bits like big ruin pieces with like some like under construction stuff, Azerite ruins, and a cool statue as well, uh, which is all sort of right here. Um, and then you get this nice A5 board, and it is double-sided. Uh, I did the side that wasn't in the picture, so you guys can see it. You get a grassy side and kind of a swampy side. But you only get one. So this is not, technically you need two copies of this box to make the minimum gaming size, the Vanguard size table, which is two of these together. So I'm hoping I get my hands on more of these or that they match the one that's for sale. But even then you have an odd number. Like you need two to, 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 to jam, <laughs> sort of. So I'm gonna see if I can grab another one of these second hand. So I have a second one at least for like um, some like skirmish and less than a thousand point games. Uh, you get your uh, cards for your units. Now these are the exact same cards that come in the domain box except for the allegiance abilities ones. You get no match play point values. Uh, just the rules for signs of the storm blaze of glory and venom crested weapons you get dice Which was one of my uh, comments about the domain box was there was no dice and measuring tapes and you get dice and measuring rulers little 12 inch uh, measuring gauges little clear ones You get a rules reference sheet, which is super handy uh, double-sided here, which is nice because Every source that should have one of these you get your instructions for building it You get a copy of the core rules and these are the two books I'm gonna flip open and, and actually show you guys so this is a full copy of the core rules. It's printed exactly the same um, as in the back of the uh, General's Handbook 2021. So if, you, if you've looked at the core rules in that, this is the exact same section basically in its own separate book, which is nice, but if you have the General's Handbook 2021, you, you have these as part of it. And then the Extremist Edition book, which is the background sections for the Cruel Boys and Stormcast and a bit about the universe that you're living in and also the Crusades that are happening in Gur or Gur. Uh, and then you actually get a beginner's a start playing section too, which is again, one of my comments about the um, Dominion box was it wasn't quite as beginner friendly. So there's our components um, for the box set and it does kind of resolve all of the not being a star set stuff. So I am, I don't know for sure, obviously I don't have any inside information, but this is, if this is the edition starter, this is more like the Soul Wars box. Um, was for second edition. This will probably stay around a bit longer and be more of a, hey, we're gonna have this you know, going later into the life of the edition because this is what we're gonna introduce people to the hobby with uh, and want our, like our trade accounts and our, you know, like independent retailers to be carrying. Because this is more of a, if you have nothing and you're interested in Warhammer, this gets you playing. Does it get you playing a whole game? 
not necessarily, but it gives you enough that you and a friend could crack it open and start playing. Now there's uh, the Orc War Clans box set, which is pretty neat. It comes with a lot of, I mean, not, not stuff that you haven't seen before, but you get three more Gut Rippers. Uh, now, three Gut Rippers doesn't, I mean, you'd need three and a half of these to make a 10-man unit or a reinforcement for your unit, but it gives you some cool models. They're different uh, models from the actual box set, so slightly different poses um, than the ones that come in here. So if you look at this guy, he has a different head from the guy pushing a spear. So the pushing spear guy in the box set has a helmet. This guy's got like a little cowl. Uh, this dude has an eye patch in the box set. <laughs> so they are slightly different orcs, which is cool. So if you did want to collect more like variations of models for your gut rippers units, then you could get a bunch of these or try and find them second hand. You get the fabled starter brush, which is actually a great GW brush. It's a nice fat, holds lots of paint brush. I have a buddy, Ramel. Um, he uh, has worked for years in the um, Von Mill store in Toronto of Games Workshop who like would collect these from people. Loves the starter brush and swears by it. And then some pretty standard paints. Uh, you get the classic Mephist on Red, some Lead Belcher, you get some Strowan Mud, which you can never have enough of if you're me. Uh, some Agrax Earth Shades and some um, Steel Legion Drab. And then you get this, which is the base Auric Flesh. The idea behind this is you can put it down as a base tone and then wash it with Agrax and get like a nice grimy orc face or orc um, uh, skin tone. I'm going to try it with the auric, uh, what should I call it? The auric um, contrast paint as well and see how it goes. But this stuff arrived uh, late last night and I was painting my, my, my stuff from the Dominion box to try and get this stuff early so you could see it all painted. My hope was I would just be able to finish this, but obviously life had a different um, plan for me. So anyway, um, there's the contents of the box. So let's flip through these books now. All right, and so here we go. We have the two books that come in the Extremis Edition box. The Core Rule Set, which is an A5 scale classic uh, mini rule book. If you've been playing Warhammer since, oh geez, when's the first time we got one of these in a box? Sixth edition didn't come with one, seventh did. Battle of Skull Pass came with a rule book this size. And then we have this, which is a background slash beginner book um, that gives a little bit more information. Now, if you are interested in the core rules, they are the exact same one from the General's Handbook. So this is not like a requisite. And your big hardcover edition of the core rules from the Dominion box includes the narrative rules. They are not in here. This is just the core rules for the game. You have the core rules, Conquest Unbound, um, with the basic battle plans in here, Triumph and Treachery, Convergence of Fate, and then all of the core rules for the game itself, uh, which include all the phases, all of the, like, how you play, uh, and some little color sections. This stuff actually is new. Not new completely, but it's not parsed in the core rules, I don't think, in the General's Handbook. So Ben Johnson's beautiful Sons of Bayamad Army uh, and Conquest Unbound playing huge games. Siege Warfare rules are in here. Triumph and Treachery are in here. Tunnel Fighting's in here, but nothing for um, the narrative play with Path to Glory. So you, you do get a few, like, like, scenarios, but because you don't get match play points in this box set, they're basically just giving you, like, funsies, tunnel fighting, weird rules. And an army roster in the back. Um, so, like I said, very nice if you've, if you've not, like, got anything for Age of Sigmar yet. Great way to get the core rules. Obviously, they're free PDFs online as well. Um, but this gives you a physical copy, and I always prefer to play off a physical copy <clears throat> because it's just easier. Like, it's just, uh, uh, flipping on a phone, I just don't find it be as easy as flipping on something like that. The Extremis, and also carrying that in your bag with your miniatures is going to be way easier too. Uh, and then the Extremis Edition book, and this is really the new thing in this box. So what do we have? So a basic overview, collecting Citadel miniatures, what that actually means, um, collecting for display, choosing a faction, collecting for gaming, building and painting them, open play narrative and match play definitions, uh, some background for the story of the game in Age of War, uh, the realm spheres, the monsters, and then the background for the Stormcast Eternal units that come in here, and the Cruel Boys units that come in here, and some color ideas as well. And then you're going to get a total of five missions, not using match play rules, so no point values or anything like that, to play through and learn the rules, and a little section on next steps. So it, it's it's full color, uh, again, beautifully sort of like rendered as is pretty much everything Azer Trap does book wise in full color. Um, and it's going to give you a basic premise and overview on how to play the game. Now, there are some cool pictures in here of some new stuff. And that's why I thought this was worth looking at. You got the cool Stormcast Chariot in combat. Because obviously this um, book needs to stand going forward into the rest of this edition. Uh, and so they do reference some stuff, which I think is pretty neat. Like there's some Gorgruntas and some... Um, 
Black Orc's hanging out with the Cruel Boys, you know, to show off the new Orc Warclan stuff, the big cool chariot. And I kind of hunted around to see if I could see anything new in the fold here, because there are some like kind of cool stuff, but it looks like pretty much all of the standard stuff in the previous edition. We got a Star Drake and a Maw Crusher, um, a nice uh, big fat unit of Avocators, and a Celestar Ballista. So nothing too surprising. It's really just the chariot in action that was kind of cool, but I've been hunting through trying to find any other cool, neat new units that might get spoiled. Collecting for display, like these beautiful paint jobs on this dank hold by Maxime um, Pinot. And then choosing a faction. Uh, there are some kind of neat stuff in here, like some Sword and Shield Liberators. This is an older army, but you do get to see some kind of cool conversion stuff in the background here. The James Karch's uh, army and then this beautiful Nighthawk army too uh, by Ben Johnson. Building and painting miniatures, an overview of that. It does reference the Cruel Boys, uh, which is nice because they're what came in the starter paint set. And then playing a the game in the different ways you can do it. Open play, narrative play, and match play. And once again, kind of hunting through here, trying to find cool new stuff. I haven't, I haven't spotted anything apart from the chariot really that was that neat. Background of the, the current events, the Dawnbringer Crusades, the different mortal realms, and the realm sphere. So if you're totally new, then it does give you like a nice kind of like backgroundy overview of where the game's at and what's happening. And the Air of the Beast, because obviously this 2021 is set in um, Gur, and of course all of the events with Kragnos being unleashed in Broken Realms. How that went down, it's kind of a, 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 a nickel sort of like version of the story. And then Amerson Watches War, which is the Dominion uh, box set story. More beautiful color photos, but nothing too new model wise. And then a color section through all the stuff that comes in the box. So including the terrain, which is pretty substantial. We got some Storms of Chaos stuff. Or sorry, Slaves of Darkness stuff, sorry. Facing some Stormcast. Again, all the box set stuff on display. But that one piece of new photography of the chariot, I thought was cool. Over here, some Fire Slayers fighting Cruel Boys. More Stormcast versus Cruel Boys. Again, the Amberson Watch stuff, so no, no new units featured here. And starting to play. So what do you need? What is a game? Uh, Battlefield Game Board, Train Features, defines everything that comes in the box, and then you've got some very simple scenarios. And if you look, they, they walk you through, like, it's a one model against two models thing. Running through the attack sequence. And this is a great learn while playing, uh, tell, show, have a go sort of like um, method of learning how to play Warhammer. Battle Plan 2, High Ground, it's four models against five. And again, you're not worrying about point values. Under strength units get used a whole bunch. Aim and fire, so dealing with shooting and stuff. Gut Rippers versus Vindictors. Magic, so introducing magic with the pot, uh, the Swamp Call of Shaman and the Pot Grot. And then Hallowed Ground, using everything that was in the box. So Slitas, Gut Rippers, and the Swamp Call versus the Praetors, Vindictors, and Lord Impuritant. And playing with objectives and using command abilities. And so it slowly, it, it slowly introduces all of the core rules to the game through five missions. And then you get a few extra like fun things like the siege rules and stuff in the core rules that you can play as well. And of course, the next step with all the start collecting boxes and the battle tomes. You get your pitch battle profiles, not in the card, but in here. So it, it's fairly balanced. Um, you're, it's not referred to until the end really though, so that you can, uh, you know, like bop through and play all these scenarios first and then how to, how to do like basically a little star set game. And it's going to be 455, uh, against 400 for the Cruel Boys. The Cruel Boys are a bit under strength compared to the Stormcast, but that's just the nature of Stormcast being more points. Um, and you're, you're gonna get a bigger Stormcast army out of this box than you are a um, Garpus, uh, not Garpus, Cruel Boys. And I think that's why it's important it's never referenced until the end of this book or in any of the cards that you might accidentally look at, which is smart because then you don't worry about balance until you've played these five battle plans, hopefully. And after that, you graduate into the next step stuff and start thinking about playing a further game. You get a reference sheet that's the same as the reference sheets that are printed, which is kind of nice for command abilities and the uh, spells and stuff. And that's it the Extremis Edition book. So I, I think that that's, there's some interesting and valuable things that are done in here. One, the layering of how you approach and learn the rules is really nice. I do wish there was a read this first sticker on here. That happens sometimes in boxes. Like, don't look at this book, look at this book first. Because I do feel like for a beginner, that's a great thing to, to have access to. 
If you are a veteran games workshop hobbyist or just wargaming hobbyist in general, though, it's probably fine. Just look through the core rules. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the, the review, I do think that this set kind of fills in the gaps from the Dominion Star set, and I do hope this stays in the range for a while. This is a really valuable box for independent retailers, um, for going to you know conventions and stuff like that, where people pick up new games for the first time, uh, and for Games Workshop stores looking to recruit new hobbyists. So I do think that the core two-player starter set is a, is a valuable addition to any game system, and the better it's laid out and parses you know, the zero-to-wargamer sort of experience, then the better that that game basically has new recruits coming in. It's one of those things where a good two-player starter set can offset a lot of the feel-bad things that can happen when you first start doing the hobby. Whether you feel like your paint jobs aren't good enough, or you don't know what to collect first, or there's just this massive wall of products that Games Workshop has that are kind of unapproachable, this just gives kind of like a more goldfish in the bag going into the, the fish tank kind of experience than just being thrown in the deep end and hope that you survive. So uh, I'm glad it exists. I'm glad this came out uh, after the main box set, obviously, for like the veteran hobbyists to, I guess, augment the range, and I hope it stays in the range for a while. Uh, it's a nice star set. It's as close as those star set models could be, basically balance wise. Uh, it does a good job of hiding that fact until the end when you've gotten through this whole book uh, to kind of give you a just play with your toys and learn the rules kind of experience through the five missions that come in this book. So there's my GMG review of the Warhammer Age of Sigmar uh, two player star set, the Extremis Edition. Talks about Nash. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathbird Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.